I'm going to walk down the method that you would use to create a page in Canvas. And I'm also going to show you some of the features that the pages have that you can use. Now first, to get there, remember this is the global navigation menu. So this handles all of Canvas. And this is the course navigation menu. So you have to be inside a course. So I've just come here and chosen my sandbox. That's my course where I experiment with things. And then I'm going to choose Pages. So once I'm in Pages, you can see all the pages here. I'm going to create a new page up here at the top by clicking on Plus Page. Now this interface, it looks the same when you make an assignment, when you make a discussion, when you make almost anything in Canvas, you have this whole kind of window. Up here is where you put the title. My title's going to be generic. Title goes here. And then this is where you make the content for the page. Now, I'm just going to type something. So I could show you what the buttons do. This first one will make it bold. Second will italicize it. Third, of course, is underlined. You're probably familiar with those. Then you get into where we can have some fun. This is the text color button. I'm going to make my text white and my background black. That you could use. Uh, that background one is really great if you need to highlight something. This one will clear all of that formatting. <laughs> When you've made a mistake, this button will save you. These are fairly self-explanatory. The alignment. You could do that with a picture, too, with any kind of photograph. These are underutilized. That's what you want to use when you move something over. And then... These also work if you're using the list. So here's my list. I can make bullets or numbers. But then if I want to change the levels, I use these two. Oh, well, that's level two. Oh, no, it's not. If you need to make superscript, or a subscript. <laughs> Probably have to choose one. That's where you do those. Now this is pretty handy. I click that to turn that off. This is where you'd insert a table and you can kind of figure it out from there. If you need, once you're in your table, you can select to delete the whole row or to insert a column or to delete a column. This is where all that handy stuff is. I'm going to delete my whole table. Um, the table automatically resizes for what's inside it. This is where I can insert something if I want to embed something. You've seen uh, embed codes and you're like, oh gee, I don't know how to use that. If you copy that and then paste it here, you could put that right in your Canvas page. This is how you link something, and I'll show you that in detail later. And if you have it linked and want to undo it, that's how you get rid of it. You can embed an image with this button uh, if you have a web page you're doing it from, or if it's already uploaded to your canvas, or if it's on Flickr. There's another place to insert things that I'll show you in a minute. Um, this is how you access the handy math equation editor if you need to insert a math equation. This, if you set up your Google account with it, and there is a completely separate course on how to do this um, that's very short and very simple to do, then it ties it to your, um, to your Google Drive, and then you can embed right from your Google Drive. And that's a pretty handy feature. 
and it just pulls up the assignment. So here's uh, PowerPoint or whatever Google calls that. Google Slides right there in my presentation. And again, that's a, that's a separate a separate tutorial that you can take and get some professional development points for. This is a similar thing with eMedia to insert something right in. This is what you'd use if you want to record yourself and embed it. I, I really don't want to do that right now. Um, I've never used these buttons before in my life. You can experiment with those. The one more that you might use is this uh, is the font size. And this is how you can decide what it should be. Oh, now it's a header. So if I want to make this a header, I can I can do that. And that has some formatting differences, some things that matter in the code. And notice that clearing the formatting doesn't take away its uh, default there. And then last, this button is very handy. It will check the accessibility. Oh, look. Uh, so a handicapped person would be able to read that. And that, that's important for us in education. This window over here, this handy little thing, is the linker or the embedder, or I don't know what Canvas calls it. But if you have other pages already made, say I want to insert my a link to my delete me page, I can just click on it. Or if I want something like this, I can highlight it, and then I can link it. And now it's linked to the other page. If I've got an assignment I want embedded, this is where I find those. If I have a quiz I want to put in, same thing. And I could do the same. If I had a picture in here, I could click on the picture and then um, and then turn it into a link to something else. Uh, by the way, if you want to link to something like the modules, it's this course navigation down here. If I want to insert one of my files, this is where I can come to put it in. I can also upload a new file right here. Or if I want to do an images, an images, <laughs> If I want to do an image, um, images in Canvas, you can't just copy and paste. It's unfortunate. I wish that you could. But if I need to upload an image, and pages look so much better with an image, I could click on the upload, choose where I want to put it, choose my file. I like that one. Now, it for a handicapped person, uh, I can put what this is. It, for example, if the person is blind, it will now read it to them. Or if the person has trouble reading, uh, it could read it to them. Or I could say it's just a decoration. You don't really need that. And then I click on Upload, and it will put it right there. And then a lot of these same can align it to the right or the left or the middle. A lot of the same buttons apply. Now when I'm done I decide I could allow students to edit this if I want them to. Uh, that's handy if you're making some review pages. Sometimes uh, teachers will assign changing the wiki pages as an assignment for the students. So you could make it so the teacher the students could do it, or it, it, maybe you even want your observers to be able to. Usually you'll probably put only teachers, and that's the default. Then I could save it if I just want to leave it the way it is, or I could save and publish it. Now, this is old school. If you don't save, it doesn't automatically save for you. Now, publish will make it so that other people can see it, so I want to save and publish it. And now you can see this little web page that I built that is the ugliest web page I've ever built. So I want to delete it. I'm going to go back into view all pages. And where it says title goes here, I'm going to find that one. I could unpublish it here or publish it here. I'm just going to hit delete and get rid of it. Notice there's also a duplicate option. It's a good idea to have your pages be similar to each other. And so that duplicate option is very handy for that.